Hi everyone, this is from your investigations manual that goes with your microscope. It is a very good read. It is going to help you quite a bit with your uh, report sheet for this lab. So please look it over. There are some videos that are linked here and the videos are quite good. The videos are, are really helpful for taking photographs through your microscope if you want to give that a try. So I like to draw um, instead because it helps to cement everything for me. But if you want to give the photos a try, go for it. And again, it's going to take some practice. So give yourself some time to do that. It will not save you a lot of time because it's going to take some practice to get it right. Um, when you look at the second page of the investigations manual, it'll be telling you some important things here. And I think you should use your protective equipment. Um, you are going to be doing this lab with um, mold spores and with shrimp. And you don't know, you could have some allergic issues with either one of these um, proteins that are that are involved with the mold or involved with the shrimp. So yeah, I think it's a very good idea to use the goggles, the gloves, and the apron for this. And um, to keep in mind that you'll need to be cleaning up um, quite a bit afterwards. Um, when we look into the time requirements, I'm thinking that those time requirements are very, very brief. And I think you're going to need more time for this lab. Um, just in making sure that your technique is in good shape. And so please give yourself a number of hours to get this lab um, observed and then you more time to do the write-ups after it. Do not try to rush this. This section in here has a great area on um, a background of the parts of your microscope. I will leave you to that because I want to get to the point where you are thinking about depth of field for your microscope and you have a section in your report sheet on depth of field. You will be doing this lab with uh, two lighting systems and you can compare depth of field on each one of them. So read over this section so you understand a little bit more and then as you get to the next page you will understand more. So you will need to put in your 10x eyepiece that is in your white box. Remember to put it in there, please. Your objectives are down here. Your microscope does not look exactly like this, but all microscopes have the same parts. So let's talk about it. You have a, um, a um, you have three objectives here. One is 4x, one is 10x, one is 40x. Explore them a bit. You also have a diaphragm. It doesn't look exactly like that, and the diaphragm is for light um, variability uh, for your compound light source, which is underneath the, um, underneath the stage. You also have a light source above in yours, and that's a stereo microscopic view from a light source above. So definitely check it out. You have a um, you have a finer adjustment here. Um, it's more like a combination between coarse and fine, and um, it does the job. And what I would say is the base is just okay. You are probably going to be keeping one hand, your left hand or your non-dominant hand, on the base. And, and one hand rotating at the same time because there's not a lot of weight to this microscope. Now, this is the section I really wanted to get to for you. And let me move this over so we can talk a bit. I've told you that the um, eyepiece is a 10x and we multiply that 10x by the objectives and the objectives are a 4x, that's the scanning lens, or a 10x, that's the low power lens, or the high power lens is a 40x lens. So you can see that if you multiplied your eyepiece times your scanning lens, 10 times times 4 times, you get 40 times magnification. And if you get down to your high power lens, you multiply your eyepiece 10x times 40x for the high power for 400 times magnification. It does a pretty good job. So um, 
I also wanted to point out to you that you have the diaphragm in here that regulates the amount of light passing through the specimen. Um, so your compound light source is beneath. It goes through your diaphragm up to your stage. In this microscope, they do something a little different. Um, they have a diaphragm that has seven different um, um, stages for the, um, for the uh, amount of light that goes through. And it's kind of interesting because they use different wavelengths. There's a red filter, there's a blue filter. These are all different wavelengths of light so that you can get a feel for um, using um, different colors of light and wavelengths of light. You might not um, notice too much about bright light or dim light but you will notice it through the wavelengths. So keep that in mind and, um, and definitely um, report that in your observations. And for that light source, you are going to need the three AAA batteries and the Phillips head screwdriver, so keep that in mind. All right, I wanted to point out to you that um, the total magnification um, um, calculation is right there and that if you need to understand how to do a wet mount, there's information in here on preparing your slides. And in addition, um, there's a lot of information on cleaning up afterwards. And I think that's very helpful for you as well. So um, what I would say is that they have a section in here for cleanup. And that section actually is quite extensive for mold and preparing solutions and for brine shrimp, which I hadn't thought about before. If you do not want to keep the brine shrimp or you don't have an aquarium to feed your brine shrimp into, then you are going to have to dispose of them and they are non-native organisms. So you can't just dump them down the drain. Um, they have to be killed before they go down the drain so that... Um, they need to be either killed in bleach or a second option is to freeze them overnight. I don't know that I would really do that because um, you have an egg issue there. So I would prefer that you concentrate on either um, giving them to an aquarium uh, that you might have in your home um, or, or bleaching them out rather than throwing them down the drain because they're non-native organisms. Really important. I hadn't thought about it before this. Really nice um, video in here on how to take a picture through a microscope. It's not easy, but it's a great, great technique if you can get it. So if you decide that you're not going to take photographs, please use colored pencils or you can try to use Microsoft Paintbrush or Microsoft Paint or Mac Paintbrush or Cami app, but I think it's just going to be tougher to do. Um, so I really recommend the colored pencils. Um, that is it for what you need to know here. And I hope that you will give this a good look over because it will help you with your report sheet. Take care.